freeing myself from the game of life. Dear Alexander, 39. Quote, Even Socrates, who lived a very frugal and simple life, loved to go to the market. When his students asked about this, he replied, I'd love to go and see all the things that I am happy without. End quote. In life, you always have to play a game. Life on a macro level is a giant game, and within it contain endless micro games that its players, us, choose to play. Here are some common games humans tend to play. The money game. Become a something in air and chase the accumulation of money. The success game. Constantly attain higher and higher levels of superficial dopamogenic success activities. The power and influence game. Climb the hierarchical ladder and become the chief lobster that gets to tell all the other lobsters what to do. The innovation game. Create ideas, goods and services that push the boundaries of our current understanding and experience. There are numerous games. I give other examples in the full article that you can read. But whatever game you decide to play, most people never get off the treadmill. Most people always play the game on an endless loop because that is what is expected of them. That is what is conditioned into people. So how many of us have consciously, deliberately chosen to play the games we're playing? How many of us are playing other people's games instead of the ones we want to play? I don't desire to play a game just for the sake of playing a game. Just because it's another checkbox, another thing to do. How much of what I do now and what I will do is just another checkbox that I should stop altogether or just not begin at all? Do I need to consume all those podcasts, education, emails, videos, articles, or am I stuck on a loop within the game of consumption and knowledge? So before deciding the game I'm going to play, here's a framework to think about and questions to ask. One. Precisely define the desired outcome and aim of the game. Why are you playing it? Example, are you playing the health and wellness and fitness game to get into the best physical shape of your life? What does that look like? Two, define when that game is precisely finished and give yourself a range for when that game is complete and you have won. So this is using objective data, information, points to define when it's done. Okay, so for example, the health game. When do you finish that game? When can you maintain? Well, is it something like, okay, X percent of body fat percentage, um, feeling like you have energy six, at least six out of seven days of the week and not waking up tired and fatigued. Everyone has a game to play, but most people don't take the time to define the criteria of the game. How much money is enough? Define it. How much until you stop, pause, and reflect? But how do you actually know if you should play the game again? Because sometimes we do that. We play the games over and over again. Once the game is complete and won, be done with it. Instead of always adding on more just for the sake of adding on more, because that's what society's cultural norms and values expect and admire, Like, don't keep adding on more just because that's what's expected. That's what's ingrained in us. When you have won, you don't have to keep setting new goals for yourself. Believe it or not, you don't have to keep making more and more money, accumulating more and more influence and fame. You know, you don't keep getting leaner and leaner with your and putting on more and more muscle or whatever your health goal is. Like there comes a point of diminishing returns. There comes a point of uh, I have arrived. Or maybe that's the point of complacency as well. And so you need to ask yourself, if more is truly needed and the game needs to be repeated, Okay, repeat the two steps above. Define the aim, define the parameters. There's a time to level up and raise the bar even further, absolutely. But am I just raising that bar just for the sake of raising the bar? If no one knew or could see what I was doing, would I still raise the bar and play the game again? Or maybe I wouldn't have picked that game at all. So if I raised the bar again, yet no one knew I did it, that's a game 
driven by strong, authentic, intrinsic intent worth playing. If I'm going to keep pushing, why am I pushing? Is it for somebody else? Is it to boost how I'm going to be perceived? Who is it for? If it's for someone else and it's not for me, there are cracks in my foundation of reasoning. However, if it's because I reflect and observe that there is merit and value in me continuing to play and level up in this game, then that is a more authentic, resourceful decision grounded in sound reasoning. Otherwise, am I just hopping on the rat race, treadmill, and never getting off? I can always keep upping the intensity and incline, but why am I doing it? If I'm going to do that, I need to make sure it's because I really want to and it serves me to do so. Because as Navarre Ravikant says, anything done routinely can become its own trap of obligation. So are you in the, the, the treadmill? Are you stuck on the treadmill out of routine? Just blind routine and obligation. So here's a framework of criteria for choosing tasks, responsibilities, and life's games. Number one, make it deliberate, purposeful choice. And minimize choices based on obligation, momentum, expectation, or just because it's something to do. Make it deliberate. Two, do it because I want to do it. Simple as that. Are we really, are you really doing what you want to do? Because if not, resentment and ill feeling will eventually bubble up and spoil the thing that you are doing. Three, choose it because it serves me. What do I gain from it? Does it serve me in some emotional, mental, physical, spiritual, etc. way? Summary, play the games that make my life better, more effective and have utility for me. If it doesn't, why am I doing it? The final boss, being free of all games. The reason to win the game is to be free of it. This idea, this acts as a reminder to myself that for the games that I've won, it, it's time to let go of them, be free of them, and not unconsciously double down by comparing myself to the Joneses and always doing more. There's always going to be someone who looks better, performs better, is better, smarter, more educated, innovates better, has more money, is more successful, bigger business. So what are you going to do? Constantly chase that never-ending cycle of competitiveness of others? You'll never get off the, the treadmill. You'll never win the game. Maybe you don't want to win the game, though. Maybe you just want to keep playing forever. But... If you want to be free from games and have the ability to ultimately choose and not be trapped by your own mental obligation that you create for yourself, maybe comparing yourself to the Joneses is not resourceful. For almost all of us who aren't born into massive wealth, we have to play some games to fulfill Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The problem is 99% of people who play life's games never create the opportunity to stop playing if they want to. It's just giving us and you the ability to stop playing if you want to. That's what I'm talking about. So they end up dying in the treadmill rat race of life, not because they necessarily want to, but because they feel they have to or are stuck on autopilot for a lifetime. But what if I could play the right series of games at the right speeds, at the right intensities, and I beat the games, resulting in me no longer being obligated to play any of life's games anymore? Instead, imagine a life where I don't have to force myself to play any game, but I just play the ones I choose to. What if I could live a life where every game I play is a game I choose to play, resulting in a life of decision-making freedom to make any decision I like at any time, whilst not being obliged to anybody, anything, or any game? Thus, I am free, or freer than if I forced myself to play a game out of necessity, need, or lack of something. So how do I, how do we free ourselves from the, all the games? Well... This is 
This is how I believe I can do it. Attain wealth through igaki. Igaki is a Japanese term, meaning one's reason for being. It encapsulates what you love, what the world needs, what you can be paid for, and what you're good at. So your passion, mission, profession, vocation. All of these things combined in one. And wealth, what is wealth? How do we define that? It's not just financial. But a lot of people, we, all, we want to be wealthy. I want to be wealthy. Wealthy financially, to an extent. Wealthy of the mind. Wealthy of the body. Wealthy of the spirit. Wealth. Wake up when you want. Go to sleep when you want. Live where you want. And do what you want. Not because you have to. Or obliged to. You see, the purpose of money is to buy freedom. How can I optimize for independence and freedom so I don't have to answer to someone or something else and can be free of all games? Part of the answer, how to not get caught in the treadmill even in, in the midst of wealth, live below your means. That's the answer. Well, that's part of the answer. Quote, people who live far below their means enjoy a freedom that people busy upgrading their lifestyles can't fathom. I don't want to keep upgrading my lifestyle and expectations to match my circumstances and wealth. Otherwise, I'll be on the treadmill forever. End quote. Okay. To, in closing, I don't believe in the entire cessation of all life's games. I don't desire to stop playing games. I don't desire to stop the pursuit of betterment. Of being on the path. But I want the ability to ultimately choose any and every game. And make sure every game of my life is chosen out of thoughtfulness, careful consideration, solid reasoning. Instead of what most people get trapped in, what I have become trapped in in the past. And sometimes I'm sure it'll happen to me in the future. But maybe I can do it a little bit less. Not getting trapped into taking games of obligation, necessity or lack of something. So if I beat enough of the right games, I can ultimately be free of all of them. I heard Michael Jordan say, just some extra side thoughts. I heard Michael Jordan say, you know, I want to be able to go through a day or a week not worrying about what I got to do Wednesday, what I got to do Thursday, because then I'll never enjoy Monday. Sometimes I surprise myself like, oh, I've got nothing to do today or tomorrow. That to me is retirement, and that's where I want to be. And if I choose to get involved in things, then it's a deliberate choice, but not to where it takes away from the moment because I'm worried about what I have to do tomorrow. So perhaps freedom is not needing to worry about tomorrow and being focused on the present and today. Now, Michael, he earned that through decades of Hard, smart work, consistent work, being the outlier of outliers, one of the greatest. But you don't, who says you have to be the greatest to attain that? You don't need hundreds of millions of dollars or millions of dollars to have that feeling. Why? Who says? If you live below your means enough, if I live below my means enough within reason, I play the right games, then who says I can't attain that feeling? That light, free feeling. It's a feeling that only requires a certain amount of wealth, financial wealth, to tick some boxes of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Absolutely. But once those are ticked, I don't have to keep upgrading my lifestyle. I don't have to be like, all right, bigger house, better car. Like, look at Michael's lifestyle. His expenses are probably dramatically higher than even the top 5% of earners. But scale that relative to you and I and me, 
what do we got to, what do I got to attain and do? What criteria do I have to achieve in order to gain the ability and earn the ability for a focused present state of mind on today and not having to worry about what I got to do next week or tomorrow to tick my boxes of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. But the reality is, he earned that, people earn that, that takes time. And it seems I must go through times in my life where I am worrying about tomorrow, what I am worrying about Wednesday and Thursday, as the process to create a life where I could focus solely on Monday. However, it seems I must go through times in life where I actually am worrying about Wednesday and Thursday and the future in general. And that is the process, that is the doorway we all must go through in order to get to a life where we just focus on Monday on today. So that's the ride I'm on.